The 2020 iMac is the last of its kind, and that's kind of sad. Since the 2012 iMac was announced, Apple has been making steady improvements year over year to the internals of the iMac, while keeping the outside almost the same. I've been using this iMac for the last two months, and how well has it held up? Let's see. Hey, I'm Jerry, and when I unboxed this iMac two months ago, it was after a long saga of personal back and forth, waiting for a redesigned iMac, then buying a refurbished iMac, then returning it because it died, and then buying another refurbished iMac, and then after a week, after my return period expired, the new 2020 iMac was announced. And before all of that, I had a refurbished 16-inch MacBook Pro, which I also recommend. But I returned it all for this mid-range 2020 iMac. Why? Because the big display, an all-in-one design, 10th gen Intel performance, upgradability, and a few other minor things. There's no getting past the most obvious part of the iMac, and that's this 27-inch 5K display. Yeah, not full HD, not quad HD, not 4K, but 5K. That's a whole nother K compared to your 4K TV, and twice as many Ks as I have subscribers. This thing is gorgeous. From everything I've seen about the 5K displays, they are close to color accurate, bright at 500 nits, and just great to use. Now, most people probably will not care if the display is more color accurate than a $99 monitor on Amazon. And I'm no photo or video professional, and my eyes are not really trained to discern the subtle differences, but the fact that I can be pretty accurate with color correction or photo touch-ups without needing to calibrate my monitor or worry about how others will see them is nice. And new for the 2020 iMac is True Tone. So if you really don't care about color accuracy, but you'd rather have a viewing experience that is more comfortable for your eyes, then True Tone will shift the white balance of the display based on the ambient light. So if you're in a lot of sunlight during the day, the screen will be cooler. And if you used soft white light bulbs at night, then your color will be warmer. Being an all-in-one computer means that the display is hugged on all sides by a full computer. That's the display, CPU, memory, cooling speakers, and video camera. When I decided to switch back to the Mac after seven years on Windows, I bought a refurbished 16-inch MacBook Pro and liked almost everything about it. It was fast, it was portable, it had a great screen. But I wanted to use it as a desktop, so I started looking at monitors and speakers and other things that I would need for a desktop setup. I decided that I just wanted a nice, simple, clean setup, so that's why I returned it all for one iMac. And I love the simplicity. The peripherals or extras or whatever you want to call it of the 2020 iMac have been upgraded this year as well. Apple said that the addition of the T2 chip allowed for better sound and bass response and the new 1080p FaceTime camera, as well as faster HEVC encoding and storage controller. And they were right. Listen to the sound test I did comparing the 2020 iMac to the 2019 iMac speakers. I'm sure that was harder for you to hear when recording from a microphone and then listening through whatever speakers you have, but there actually was a decent improvement in clarity in the 2020 iMac audio. I've watched many hours now of live TV and YouTube and other videos on this iMac now, and never once thought that the speakers were not loud enough or clear enough or good enough. The 1080p cameras in the new iMacs have a much needed improved clarity and low light performance. With webcams being more important than ever, it was nice that we finally saw an improvement over the standard potato cams that have been in computers for years. Before I had this iMac, I would only do video calls on my iPad or iPhone because the cameras were so much better. Now, if I'm using the iMac and I need to join a video call, I will not hesitate just firing up the software on this guy instead of reaching for my iPad. 
This year's iMac also has upgraded 10th gen Intel Core processors with options for i5, i7, and i9 variations. The refurbished 2019 iMac I had was the Core i9 version with 16 threads, so I was a little hesitant going with the mid-range Core i5 for the 2020 iMac with 12 threads for things like video editing. But once I got it and actually started using it, I found that the performance was just fine for my workloads. For those that are interested in comparing against other systems, I get a Cinebench of around 3,300. In Geekbench single core scores, I get about 1,100 and multi-core scores around 5,600. I usually get some questions about how games run on a device and I'm not a big gamer, but I did download and run some games including Apple Arcade games, App Store games, and even Fortnite. In Fortnite, I was getting about 90 frames per second with mostly high settings. And in my experience, the mid-level iMac with i5 and with the Radeon 5300 seemed to have no issues. Since I've seen no issues with performance for my workflows, one of the biggest benefits of going with the i5 over the i7 or i9 is fan noise or lack thereof. The fans in this iMac are virtually silent all the time. I only hear them ramp up at the end of a Cinebench test or at the end of a 10 minute video export in Final Cut or Premiere. When I had the i9 iMac, I would hear the fans on a regular basis without doing what I would consider a heavy workload. Just even Apple's default apps like Safari and Notes would spin the fan up for no discernible reason. So I'm really glad that the i5 does not seem to have that issue. Another great thing about this 27 inch 2020 iMac is that you can still upgrade the memory. It's as simple as it could be. Pop open the back door, add the memory, close the door and boot. I added 32 gigabytes of OWC memory to the eight gigabytes included with the iMac for a total of 40 gigabytes. And I should be set for a while with that for what I use the computer for. Now, we do need to talk about the Apple Silicon elephant in the room. There were rumors of a new design iMac coming this year and that didn't happen. Apple also announced that Apple Silicon Macs were coming this year. While I do not think that we will see Apple Silicon iMacs this year, you might be wondering, should you wait instead of buying an Intel 2020 iMac? Like always, you'll see it everywhere. If you need something now, you should buy it now. If you have specialized software that you need to work well, you should buy an Intel iMac because you do not know how well it's gonna run or not run on Apple's new hardware or how long it's going to take for that third party to update their apps. If you wanna be able to save money and upgrade your memory with third party like OWC, you should buy an iMac now because we do not know if we'll be able to have the ability to add additional memory to Apple Silicon Macs. If you want a tried and true architecture that will be supported probably for more years than you actually own the computer, you should not hesitate to buy an Intel iMac. And if you need to boot into Windows for any reason, for a specific app, for specific games, you should buy an Intel iMac. So with all of that said, the improvements to the iMac for 2020 are pretty good. If you want a computer with a great display, all the components you need like speakers and a camera and great performance that will be supported for many years. If you want the cleanest desktop experience without a mess of cords, there is no better all-in-one desktop than the iMac. And it comes with everything you need right in the box to get started computing stuff but it can always be better. You can always add something like storage or extra USB ports or memory. And if you're interested in seeing something about that, you can check out this video over here about my iMac accessories. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want to, <laughs> and I'll see you next time.